pounds. We're here again in the kitchen and today we're going to be showing you how to do elderberry syrup. Now I know a lot of people need to know how to do this because it's getting to be cold and flu season again and elderberry syrup is a great healer. I know that we have a little bit of a cold going around again in our house and I said I need to do a video because I have to show everybody how to use elderberry and how we can make elderberry. So hopefully this will be beneficial for you. All right, so I know there's a lot of different recipes out there and a lot of different stuff on the web and um, YouTube, whatever, about how to make them. So this is just what we do um, if you're interested in how we make it. I also have a blog post on making elderberry syrup and elderberry tincture, which a tincture is um, elderberry put in alcohol or any kind of herb. You can do any kind of herb in, in an alcohol and make a tincture, but today I'm just going to show you how to make elderberry syrup. All right, so first I'm going to go through everything that you need to make this and then as I go along I'll tell you a few little kind of helpful hints and kind of some of the reasons why I use what I use. So I have my little cheat sheet here just because I don't want to screw it up. I'm making a double batch today because for one, this year we had an extra big batch of elderberries um, come on our elderberry bush. So some years I don't get so many, sometimes the, the birds um, get them before I do. But this year we had an abundance of it, so I'm gonna make a double batch. We also had aronia uh, berries that were blooming, finally made berries for us this year. And those are kind of experimental plant, but they're super high in antioxidants. And so we're gonna try adding those to our syrup this time. Hopefully it'll all still taste good. Um, so we're first gonna need, we're gonna need um, these other aronia berries. And they're a little bit bigger and I've frozen them. You can use them either dried or frozen or fresh, doesn't matter. So first we're gonna, my recipe calls for a half a cup or a quarter cup, but I'm gonna use a half a cup today. So I'm just gonna pick them off my frozen branch. I literally just cut them off, snip them off when they were, and you wanna wait till they're dark red, like this dark purple. Um, do not pick them off before them because they're not going to be as high in antioxidants. So I don't know if you can see that, but they're really dark purple. Uh, these are new plants. I've never had them before. I didn't actually know anyone else who had them, but I read that they were very, very good for you and very high in um, antioxidants. And that's what we want to be having when we're trying to fight a cold or flu. So I'm just going to finish picking those off. And again, once I'm going to heat this up in a pot, of water so all this stuff doesn't matter if it's frozen and I, again I have four cups of water already in my pot in my container um, again filtered water I just think that's always best if you have filtered water and I have four more cups up here that I'm going to add on top of my herb so the other things that we're going to be using are echinacea root and so I have two tablespoons of echinacea root and you can get echinacea root uh, online <laughs> that's where you usually get it I know you could probably get it dry it yourself um, if you're very ambitious but I'm not that ambitious so I just buy mine online and then the other thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need whole cloves which you can get those in your regular grocery store so those are right here and you're gonna need for my recipe ten usually five so anything I'm saying cut it in half I will post the recipe for it on my blog and maybe at the bottom of the notes for the video so that you know um, how to make it in a small batch, which is probably what most people would want. I have a lot of kids. Uh, I think most people know I have nine kids, but I have some of them living out of the house. Some are married and have their, ch their own children. And so hopefully I've inspired them to <laughs> be herbal people too. So anyway, so here's our aronia berries. So we're just gonna take those and we're gonna put those in our pot. Then I also have elderberries off our elderberry tree. And so, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna just take those and we're just gonna pull those off. And I'm gonna put them actually in a bigger bowl because they're a little bit smaller. And again, I just took them off the, took them off the branches or snip them off with my little snippers you can use them dry I have actually some that you can buy that are dry 
already for you. It's really not, I'm just kind of showing you how you would harvest them yourself. Just once they're frozen, they come right off. And these actually come, they have a beautiful little flower in the summertime. And the flower is actually medicinal also. So you could cut them off and make them um, into different kinds of syrups and medicinal uses for that also. And also is very good, elderflower is very good for your skin. So you could put it in the extract in a, in a skincare lotion or something. This is very good for you. All right, so the other thing, I'm just gonna keep going here. The other thing that we're gonna put in there is going to be hibiscus. So here's some hibiscus flowers in here, and I'm going to put a half a cup of hibiscus flowers. Again, for you, be a quarter cup. And then I have rose hips, dried rose hips, which a lot of people have roses, so I would encourage you that if you have your own roses, um, to gather your own rose hips and dry them because it's really not that difficult. They're super high in vitamin C and really super good for you. So, all right, so here's my elderberries. I'm gonna put those in the water with my aronia. All right, and I may put a little bit more in there. Haven't decided that yet. Make it a little stronger. So anyways, let's see, what happened? Oh, we forgot the cinnamon. So we're gonna take two cinnamon sticks for, we're gonna take two cinnamon sticks for, um, the pot, we're going to put those in there. It's just mostly for flavor. Gosh. All right, so the next thing I'm going to put in there is going to be some fresh ginger root. Now, you don't have to use fresh. I have used dry before. Um, and if you use dry, just you're going to use one tablespoon less than fresh. So you basically just cut off the bark. I guess that's what it's called, I'm ginger the outside <laughs> skin and then you're going to grate it so it goes into the just take my grater like I would do for cheese or anything else and just kind of go down and grate it it's super easy um, goes a lot faster than if you're going to try and cut it and fresh ginger root is, I just think, a little bit better. Just like fresh garlic is better than powdered garlic. A lot more of the chemicals and the things that are healthy for us are in the live plant. Always use fresh if you can. All right, so we're almost there. Need just a couple of tablespoons, so. You kind of notice it gets a little bit like these little strings on it. Fibrous, it's very fibrous. So I may have to cut a little bit of that off of there. Ginger is great. Super good for your digestion. Um, really good for your respiratory system when you have a cold. My little guys had this little bit of a cough this week and I'm like, I gotta get this. I gotta make this. All right. So we've got about two tablespoons there, so I'm happy with that. All right, so we're gonna put that in our pot. And don't worry, because you're gonna strain this, so don't worry about, oh, it's too big of chunks or anything, because you're gonna, you're gonna throw it out. Put in a thing and throw out the stuff after you strain it, so don't worry about that. All right, so the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is that we're gonna need honey. And so hopefully, preferably, you have some local honey. That's always the best, um, or your own. That's even better. And so you're gonna need one to two cups for a regular um, recipe. If you use one cup of honey, it's gonna, this recipe after we cook it, it will last for three months. If you use two cups of honey for it, it will last six, up to six months. Now there's just so many healing, wonderful benefits of honey. I just, I have this really cool book that I always look at. It's a, like an antiviral book. And so we have so many different antibiotics and all these things that are out there now that you know people are finding oh it's this virus is resistant to whatever this bacteria is resistant to antibiotics but there's so many they're finding so many things about honey and me being a beekeeper I just always like to share with you some of the wonderful things our bee friends are giving us so in this little book that I have 
Um, this is from a guy named Stephen Booner, I think is his name, B-U-H-N-E-R. So anyways, he's writing about honey. So I just wanted to share this one little piece. It said, in one pound of honey, there is 1.4 grams of protein, 23 milligrams of calcium, 73 milligrams of phosphorus, 4.1 milligrams of iron, one milligram of niacin, 16 milligrams of vitamin C. It also contains vitamin A, beta carotene, the complete complex of B vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, magnesium, sulfur, chlorine, potassium, iodine, sodium, copper, manganese, and high concentrations of hydro peroxide and formic acid. Honey, in fact, contains over 75 different compounds. Many of the remaining substances in honey, comprising 4% to 7% of the honey, are so complex that they have yet to be identified. They use it for healing wounds. They use honey for um, just so many things medicinally now that I can't stress to you enough about using honey. So get your honey. We're going to use it later and get a jar because we're going to need that later um, with the top. And I'm probably sure this is not going to all fit in here. I'll probably have two of these and I'll be able to share and give one away. So we're going to take our herbs now, the rest of them. So here's my rose hips. You put them in there. I already pre-measured all these. And the hibiscus. And let's see. Four. Pretty close to ten. <laughs> and then my echinacea root. All right. Super easy. Just gonna take a spoon. Gonna mix them all around. We're not, as you notice, we're not adding the honey right now. We're just going to be simmering our herbs for a while. So we're not going to keep you waiting. We'll just do it to the end. We'll skip to the end so you don't have to watch us do that whole part. But we're, so we're going to take this pot and we're going to put it on our burner and we're going to simmer it, simmer it, simmer it, simmer it for a while. You want the water in here to reduce to half. Once it's reduced to half, we're going to come back. All right, so this is about an hour and a half later, and our syrup has been reduced. Our liquids are reduced about a half. And as you can see, the herbs are pretty much all flat now, and they've released all their good medicinal qualities. Still really warm. Um, I've let it cool down somewhat, but it's still really warm, so be careful when you pour it um, into your pot. So I have a colander here, and uh, like a stock pot or any kind of larger pot um, that will fit your colander. And then I have my trusty towel that I use every time, as you can see. Kind of got stains on it because I try and use the same one for everything and it will stain it so don't use something good use like an old t-shirt you know like the ones that your husband always wears that you really don't like anymore <laughs> go take those and use those as your straining towel so yeah you can use a t-shirt anything um and you want your honey but you don't want to use that yet so first we're going to take this really good stuff and very carefully because it is warm pour it through the towel because you don't really want any of that into the syrup when you make it and most of your herbs will just be careful because it is hot and you don't want to splash it on yourself and I always kind of scrape it in there because you want to get all that stuff out of there all the good juice that's still in there you want to get that in the syrup because that's where all the good stuff is it's going to make you better when you're sick They've done studies on elderberry syrups and how much they help heal. Even better than, like say a Theraflu or something like that, that you can get over the counter. It's another reason why we love 
herbs because they will be tried and true to help us feel better and get better way past antibiotics that don't work anymore. So then you just take one of these little tong things <laughs> and you're gonna squeeze it out as best that you can. You're not gonna be able to squeeze it too much because there's a cinnamon stick in there. But do your best, but be careful, it's really hot. And you do want it to cool down somewhat because when you add your honey, you do not want it to be super hot anymore. Because honey, actually, the beneficial qualities of honey are best when you never let them boil. Never let honey boil. Because you will boil out some of the medicinal value of honey. And that defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do here. So I'm just going to keep, if you kind of hold it tight up here, and then take your tongs and just keep twisting, you'll see, I don't know if you can see that, all those berries are still holding a lot of juice in there. So we want everything that we can get out of there. And even though this is hot, it's not too hot for the honey. So we're going to go ahead and add that. Now, you can tincture this, again, does not taste as good. So you're not gonna, if you try and do this as a tincture, you're probably gonna have a hard time getting your kids to, to take it, because it's not sweet at all, and it's pretty bitter. Elderberry on its own is very bitter, um, sour. So unless you put something with it, glycerin or honey, uh, it will not be very palatable. So here's my two cups. Now remember, I've doubled my recipe, so that's how come I'm adding two cups. If you're making a smaller batch, you would only add one. There are a lot of um, properties that make it so that you don't even have to worry about how long you use this. We always use ours up before the winter's over. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of what that name, <laughs> preservative qualities of honey. Like honey doesn't ever go bad. They've found honey in tombs. So yeah, <laughs> doesn't ever go bad. It's just so mysterious, so beautiful what is in honey. So we're just gonna, pretty much this is the end of our syrup then. We're just gonna stir this in until it seems like it's all dissolved. And then we're gonna very carefully, we're going to pour it into our jar. So we can either use a jar like this, this is what I usually use, and then, you know, everybody in the house just comes and gets a tablespoon or a teaspoon whenever they need it, when they feel a cold coming on or the flu or whatever. It smells so good right now though. It smells like cinnamon and cloves and all that good stuff. Or you can put it in a bottle like this. So this, you can, you can buy these little bottles, um, like over the counter, you can get them, but mostly online. You can get them on Amazon or Mountain Rose Herbs, that's my favorite place. Um, and so you can do droppers full in your kids' mouths or whatever too, if it's more convenient to do it that way. But yeah, they're just called amber bottles, amber dropper bottles. So if you want to get something like that and keep them in your refrigerator. You wanna keep this in your refrigerator. That's another difference between a syrup and a tincture. A tincture you can keep room temperature for years and it won't go bad. Syrup, the syrup you have to put in the refrigerator and you have to keep it in the refrigerator. Um, otherwise it will spoil eventually. I'm not really sure how long, cause I don't do that. <laughs> so, but it would eventually spoil. So, I think I've mostly got it, but when it's, you know, it's just starting to be fall here and my farmer's market's done, so I thought it was a good time to always make a batch of this to get us through the winter and you'll save yourself a lot of money because elderberry tincture and syrup can be kind of expensive if you want to go buy it and it's really not that hard to make. So, all right, so now we're gonna pour it into our jar and you can use a funnel that you would use for jam or jelly. 
but I'm just gonna pour. I'm kind of used to doing this just because of all the herbal products that I do and made this syrup every year for the last umpteen zillion years. <laughs> so you're just gonna pour it in your quart jar, pint jar, whatever you want to use and you're basically just gonna seal it up and then you're gonna write what it is on top and the day that you made it. You don't really have to. I mean, most of the time we use ours up so fast that I don't worry about it. But if you feel better putting the date on it, put a date on it. And then you're gonna just put it in your refrigerator. And whenever you feel a cold coming on or the flu bug, something that somebody's got or you wanna prevent um, getting any of those, you just take, an adult would probably take a tablespoon or two, depending on how much you wanna prevent things or get better. And a child would be using a teaspoon teaspoon or two um, and you can use it morning noon night doesn't matter it's just really good to start getting in your system many many healing benefits to using elderberry syrup so I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video I hope you've seen that it is super easy to make your own elderberry syrup and I hope that you give it a try and I hope you come back and see what we're doing on the wishing maker next time thanks have a good day